Hello, my name is Nicolas Kröger. I'm the medical director of the Department for Stem Cell Transplantation at the University Medical Center Hamburg in Germany. And we are mainly involved in stem cell transplantation and we are expertise in stem cell transplantation for myeloid fibrosis. So the question you have seen whether patients should be received the transplant before or after ruxolytic failure is actually a very exciting and timely question. But first of all, we have to ask, should patients who should receive an allergenic stem cell transplantation, which are mainly patients in intermediate two or high-risk disease, according to the DIPS or other classification symptoms, should receive at any way ruxolitinib? So ruxolitinib or other JAK inhibitors can reduce the spleen size, improve constitutional symptoms, and thus this is a rationale to improve the status of the patient regarding spleen size, but also regarding his constitution before he goes to transplantation. And then to at least consider that then the morbidity and mortality of the transplant will be less. So many studies have been performed to use ruxolitinib before transplantation. And indeed, the response rate was actually, as it has been seen in the, uh, in the studies, in the, in the pivotal approval studies uh, for ruxolitinib. But here, regarding whether transplant should be done in patients who received ruxolitinib or fail ruxolitinib is an interesting question. So what we recently did in the European Society for Blood and Marrow Transplantation, so we collected data from more than 550 patients who received allergenic stem cell transplantation for myelofibrosis in the last years. And half of the patient had received ruxolitinib before transplantation and the other half did not. And if we compare the data between patients who received ruxolitinib and who those who did not re receive ruxolitinib, actually the outcome was very comparable. So showing that at least giving ruxolitinib prior to transplantation does not negatively influence the outcome after stem cell transplantation. However, very interestingly, what we observed also, if we divided the group of patients who received ruxolitinib prior to transplantation in those who received ruxo and then failed or has no response or lost response to those patients who received stem cell transplantation after they have achieved a maximum response, it was interestingly, those patients who achieved a response to ruxolitinib and went then straight to transplantation had a significant better outcome regarding event-free survival, but also regarding relapse. So this is important information because it suggested if you consider giving ruxo prior to transplantation, and then you should do the transplant when the patient is in best response to ruxolitinib and not wait until patient is losing the response to ruxolitinib. This is sometimes a bit difficult because if patients have severe constitutional symptoms and they feel weak and they have a huge spleen and they are improving by ruxolitinib, most of the patient ask the physician, oh, I feel so good. Why should I go to the transplant and take the risk of going to getting the transplant now? But according to these data, this is data from the EBMT, but there are also historical data from another study, so CRBMTR, suggesting the same. Patients who are responding to ruxonitib and then go immediately to transplant have the most benefit uh, regarding outcome after stem cell transplantation. So the message is clear. Ruxolitinib prior to transplantation in patients with spleen, uh, huge spleen size constitution and symptoms, yes. If there is indication for stem cell transplantation, don't wait if patient is failure to ruxo or didn't or is is um, you should go for transplant if your patient had to respond with an ongoing response at time of transplantation.